Welcome folks, this is Wear and Tear, yet another YouTube out there and gear review channel. Today you can join me at the campfire, just enjoy the fire, enjoy the forest and the animal sounds, and that for the next nine minutes. If you don't want to do that, just skip ahead at nine minutes and thirty seconds. You will find some video shots of a fire salamander.
Empire's all members live in Central Europe. They love fallen leaves and they live around mossy tree trunks. Now they produce some toxin which can cause strong muscle convulsions, but it's not dangerous for adult humans. And if you don't stress the animal too much uh, or touch it in the wrong spot, uh, you won't, will not be exposed to the toxin. So this fire salamander is fairly relaxed. Yes, he is on the hunt for some insects, or maybe some spiders or some slugs. Now it's a beautiful animal. I always love to see them. You don't see them that often. They come out more in the evening and uh, in the night, but sometimes, especially if it's rainy, you also see them during the daytime. So it's always pleasant to see them. Now, as to the origin of the name Fire Salamander, there is an article in the magazine Wired that explains it very nicely. And the article reads, in the first century AD, Roman naturalist Pliny the Elder threw a salamander into a fire. He wanted to see if it could indeed not only survive the flames, but extinguish them, as Aristotle had claimed such creatures could. But the salamander didn't make it. Yet that didn't stop the legend of the fireproof salamander, a name derived from the Persian meaning fire within, from persisting for 1,500 more years, from the ancient Romans to the Middle Ages, on up to the alchemists of the Renaissance. Some even believed it was born in fire like the legendary phoenix, only slimier and a bit less dramatic, and that its fur, well, where's the fur, could be used to weave fire-resistant garments. That's pretty awesome. Pliny wrote about the powers of this Almanda in his natural history. It is so chilly that it puts out fire by its contact, in the same way as ice does. It vomits from its mouth, a milky saliva, one touch of which on any part of the human body causes all the hair to drop off. And the portion touched changes its color and breaks out in a tether, a sort of itchy skin disease. Some 500 years later, Saint Isidore of Seville wrote that while other poisonous animals strike their victims individually, the salamander slays very many at the same time, for if it crawls up a tree, it infects all the fruit with poison and slays those who eat it. Nay, even if it falls in a well, the power of the poison slays those who drink it. He also confirmed that it's immune to the effects of fire. Later on in the 1200s, an English writer told of one of those salamanders laying waste to Alexander the Great's army by simply swimming in the river they drank from. All told, 4,000 soldiers and 2,000 horses supposedly perished after consuming the salamander's dirty bathwater, which would be pretty embarrassing if only it were true. I'll link the article from Wired below. And thank you for watching this video. This is Wear and Tear, over and out.